everybody, my name is Halvard. Um, topic, or the title of my topic today is A Sentence for Life. I'm going to get back to this number later. First, I'm going to start off with a small short story. Uh, I'm going to take us back to 22nd of July 2011. Uh, that's a day that is or going to be in all history books about Norway. Um, I, was, I just came back from California. I was super jet lagged. Got to bed pretty early, like 3 p.m. Um, when I heard a big boom, biggest bang I've ever heard. What I heard was a bomb going off in the central of our capital. Killed eight people. The terrorists then went to an island outside of Oslo and shot and killed 69 people. Over 60 of, 60 of them being children. That making 77 in the total. Um, to compare, Virginia Tech was, I think they killed 33 people. This is a big number. So how do you handle this kind of cruelty, this kind of action? Today I'm going to first talk about why <coughs> we use jail, why we use imprisonment. I'm going to talk about how we do it back in Norway, and probably Denmark as well, compared to the US, because that's very different. And I'm also going to talk about the benefits or drawbacks with each, each solution. So first, why jail? Why do, you, why do we use jail? There's three different re reasons. The first, I want to cite the criminal care in Norway that says that a jail sentence should take away or restrict the freedom of a convict and not take away any other human rights. So we don't want to humiliate them. We don't want to do anything else that take away part or the whole freedom of that person. The first reason why we use jail is to punish the criminal. When you do something like this, you need to be punished in a certain way. Um, it's up to every single state, every single country, how or how long you want to punish that person. But jail is the most common way, either jail or a fine or something like that. Second thing, the uh, reason why we use jail is to protect the society. Having a person who does this around in the society creates uh, dangerous situations. He might do it again, so on and so on. So we put them in a, in a prison where we can keep them secure, where we know where they are, and where we protect the rest of the society. The third reason why we use jail is that we want to put out a warning to others, to other criminals that might do this. Saying that if you do that as well, we're going to put you away for a very, very, very long time. Or in the US you might even have any other solutions. That brings me to my second point, and that's US versus Norway. I'm going to start with the US. You know, probably know more than me how the, your system works. Um, but some numbers, uh, 743 people out of 100,000 in the US are in jail right now. That's a lot. In Norway we have a number of 71. That's a lot, lot less. Um, the Bureau of Justice Statistics said that in 1994, 67.5% of all convicts within three years we're back in prison. That number is pretty stable, so it's, it's reasonable to assume that it's about the same today. In Norway, we have a number of 42%, much lower. So why is that? Why, why is it much lower in Norway? I don't want to go here and say that we do it a lot better than you. We do it a lot different. Um, when you go to prison in Norway, it looks like a hotel room. Not, not going to give you. You have TV, you have a comfortable bed, you have an old, old uh, own bathroom. It looks like a decent hotel room in Waikiki. You can have an edu education, the government pays for it. You can take courses, you can take licenses. You can do whatever you want within certain restrictions because we want to take away the freedom. We don't want to take away the uh, possibilities that that person has. So what we saw after this person did this was that some students came to school in July 
next semester and saw that this name, name of this person, was on their sheet, like we see in August or in December when we go into pipeline and see, oh, well, I'm in class with this one, this one, this one. This guy was on that sheet. Because he applied for a class and he got accepted. Now there are some other controversies again um, on that example, but that's how we do it. That brings me to my third point, and that's the benefits and drawbacks. And I'm going to go to the extremes here and talk about a bit about death penalty, which you have in some some areas and states. One innocent the person that is convicted or uh, sentenced to a death penalty, and um, and is not guilty, is one too many, in my opinion. Um, in Norway, this guy killed 77 people, shot down 69 people at close range, 60 of them being kids, got sentenced to 21 years in jail. A year in jail in Norway is about 9 months, that being 16 years, good behavior, plus minus 3-4 years, it could be out in 12 years. Now, we have, an, uh, we have a thing in Norway where we have a group of people that after 12 years will say, is he ready for society? He's never going to get, going to get out. Never going to get out. But a lot of other people who have killed two, three people or have done economic things or drug-related things that have been sentenced to 21 years, you, they can go out in society after 12 years. Now, the drawbacks of having that kind of thing in Norway is that we see that we attract criminals. There's criminals from uh, the Balkan areas, like Serbia, Greece, stuff like that, that come to Norway and see that if we do this in Norway, we get one year. If we do that back in Serbia, we get 15 years. If we do it back in Iran, we might get our hands chopped off. So that's a drawback. That's a big drawback in Norway that we see that criminals come to Norway just to, just because we have an easy society. We, um, our police doesn't have guns. We, we have a road on the side of our parliament. There's two guards guarding our king and queen. This guy, run riot. The police officers don't have a gun, they have one gun in their car. And that's how we are. We're a pretty humane society. We believe that if you do something like this, you are you can be given another chance. Maybe not ex extreme, <coughs> but there's some possibilities. You can get an education in jail. You can, you can learn to be a better human. So what I talked about today was first, why we use jail. Second, US versus Norway, how you do it and how we do it. And third, the benefits and drawbacks about each single different, uh, different uh, way to approach this. So what I want you to do is next time you see on the news that something has happened, don't just say that he should serve, I don't know how long laws you have here, or you can do 100 years, we see that people are getting 200, 300, 400, 500 years in jail. But think also that they might be can be given another chance. 